Now, right off the bat, I want to let you know there's no affiliate links. Nobody paid me to make this. I just wanted to answer the question of why, Chris, in past videos, you're using Surfer, but now I always see you using Page Optimizer. So I don't want to waste any time. I want to break down the pros, the cons, and the main reason why I personally made the switch for my clients, for my own projects, why I do it. And, and I want to let you know, first and foremost, before I get into the comparison and why, the true reason why I made the switch is because because when I'm breaking down on page optimization and I want to use a tool, a tool is there to speed up the process to speed up the process that I already utilize. So when I weigh the tools, Surfer SEO versus Page Optimizer Pro, when I get a result back and I go in and I look at the optimizations that the tool is recommending, I want it to be as close as possible to what I would do myself, except for speed that up. And when I take a look at Surfer SEO and I take a look at Page Optimizer Pro, and I look at the completed contents, which one do I have to make the least amount of modification? Page Optimizer Pro works, I'm, I choose it each and every time for the last year and a half, maybe two years. So that's why, that's why we use tools to speed up our process. But I don't want to have to make changes because I'm relying on them to do the math because what's important for on page, in my opinion, it's word count. It's how many headings there are H tags and how many of those head heading tags are, have keywords in them. So that takes care of my optimization levels. How many keywords are on the page? How many times and how many headings are there and how many headings have the keyword in them? this is optimization. And on top of that I need to make sure of LSI terms, right? LSI or NLP, depending on how you look at it, and entities and co-occurring phrases. This is how I become the most relevant. So this is this is what I'm looking for. And then on top of it, I have to go in there and do schema. I want to make sure I'm matching my schemas and my EAT scores. Like, is there licensing? Is there contact forms? Is there terms of service? What did they have that I don't? And I want to match and mirror the top 10 competitors and get as close to what they're doing. But and that's why I made the choice. When I take a look at my content and I break down everything, which one is as close to what I would do personally, but speeds it up. And that's why I made the change. Page Optimizer Pro for me is a much better choice. So let's take a look at these. I recently had some content done. Now the, my content editor has an automated system for surfer. Push the content in there and it automatically will go in there and add the phrases and keywords. It does it by itself. That's why I use her. It's really cheap. She does a good job. And then I take it over and I make my own personal modifications and then for validation I'll throw it through page off the that's how I do it I do it all the time for like every project now with that being said let's take a look at this this is how I get it back it'll send me a link like this I get it I throw it inside of here there's the URL you go to the uh, this is their content editor and then boom I have a hundred percent when I take it over to page optimizer as you can see here it's only a 22 percent op it's the same article as you can see here same exact article top right it's literally the same source source same thing now yes surfer is a lot easier to use and understand at but if you know SEO you can take a look at your to-do list and you can see here like okay meta title I have to have a keyword h1 make sure you have one to make sure it has a keyword in it right if you know what these uh, terminologies are like your page structure it's giving me the structure have one h1 okay have 15 h2 so now I'm, I'm creating my page I have one h1 15 h2s one h3 I don't don't have any h4s and i don't have any h5 so 15 16 i have 17 headings here's the page structure it gives me the page structure and then it tells me lsi is co-occurring keywords and entity words this is what makes the page relevant and then if you need a refresher you just click on show and it tells me same goes with um the exact keyword it tells me which how many and where to put it and how many times this is essential this is how i optimize my pages but when we take a look over here and the reason for the difference and why i made the choice is page optimizer Pro, this is how I do my on page. I figure out what the overall mean is or the average word count is. I figure out how many headings I need. I figure out how many of those headings need to be optimized. And then I also want to add in phrases and keywords that are going to be entity rich and co occurring keyword rich or LSI term rich. This way I can have the most relevant. As of late, I've been taking the content from here and then I have one more validation check, which is a site or a page tool called Inlinks. I use that for a relevant score or an entity score right? You can check that tool out on your own, but we'll talk about that another day. But with that being said, we have the same article and they're breaking it down. They're telling me that I have a hundred percent. This is where I was having a problem. I'm getting content back from surfer. It says a hundred. I'm posting it, but it's not 
not performing that well. So I'm going back in and I'm looking at this content. I'm like, wait a minute. There's there's far too many headings. There's not enough keyword density on the page. There's no co-occurring keywords. Like it's optimized, but it's not optimized to my specific. It's not how I would do it. A page optimizer pro takes care of this. It's not perfect. But it, it's closer to what I would personally do. On top of it, again, why I made the choice, I'm going in to see what the other competitors have as far as schema. So this tool is going to go out there, scrape all the other competitors and tell me, hey, the top 10 guys on the front page have this schema, breadcrumbs. They have search results. They have the web page, website. They have, they're listing their service types. I want to make sure that I'm matching and mirroring what the top competitors have. I actually want to match and mirror, but beat and do a little bit better, do have a little bit more. And then on top of it, there's Google entities. Again, we talked about that, but more importantly, other than the schema, we we also like to have the EAT score. So EAT is the expertise, authority, and trust. So this is, you know, that white paper Google came out with, you know, the Raiders guidelines. This is directly correlation to that white paper. So we want to make sure, hey, if our competition has a terms of service page, I need a terms of service page. If they have a contact page, I have a contact page. How about an about us? I have an about us. They have their uh, phone number up at the top and at the bottom. I want to do that. If they have their license number prominently uh, open and available. I have to do that. So this is E. I'm just breaking down a few little minuscule details, but this is E. We want to make sure we have, you know, expertise, authority, and trust. It breaks down that signal. It takes care of the schema and it takes care of the on-page, how I would do it in a lot of cases. But when we take a look at Surfer, yes, it's way more polished, prettier. Yes, it runs very quickly. Sur uh, page optimizers are really kind of slow. It probably needs a UI update, but that has nothing to do with the math that's associated with the tool that's supposed to help me optimize my pages faster to my specification. It's not supposed to take me longer. It's not supposed to make it harder. I shouldn't have to go back. I run it through, I get the tool, and I post it, and I win. That's the goal here. It's supposed to speed up the process, but let's look at this. The optimization score, and we're talking about SEO, the O stands for optimized, not uh, subpar, optimized. So when we look at this, some things that are very, very important that I want to point out is, yes, it takes care of the word count, but a big one where Surfer is missing that I, I don't like is it's listing the headings. Headings are crucial. How many headings and how many headings are optimized? It says you need 19 headings, but it doesn't tell me which. For somebody that's using a tool that wants to speed up the process and just know the math, I'd like to see this. So inside of here, you can see that page optimizer on the left-hand side is saying, here's your page structure. You need to have 1H1, 15H2s, and 1H3. This is telling me 15, 16, 17. This is 19, but the difference is, yes, they're very close, but this one's telling me how to actually structure the site. And as an SEO professional, I know that H1 is the strongest, H2 is the next strongest, and then H3. H4, 5, 6 have almost no weight. So if I was putting big keywords in, I want to get them inside of the H1, H2, and H. But over here for Surfer, it's not breaking that down. When we come over here to paragraphs, this is good, but I, I don't feel that this is going to be essential. When we're breaking down our pages, if we structure it properly, right, and we follow a structure guideline, like a Roman numeral outline, generally when you structure your page out, you, it'll form beautiful. So this is a good feature, but I don't know if it's essential knowing the amount of paragraphs. That's not as, as, as imperative as knowing the heading tags and how many. Along with that images, we weigh out the images here on page optimizer. So this is the big one for optimization is, okay, word counts, heading tags, and then the NLP, right? So NLP is co-occurring keywords or LSI. And I don't want to confuse anybody. I just want to break down the differences here. The bottom or the, just not to make this too long, long story short of it is the reason why I made the, is because when I go in to optimize a page, page optimizer, calculating what it's doing is closer to what I would normally do for my clients. Now, this is a good tool that's fast, easy to use. It's good for maybe you're a beginner that's just trying to get a competitive advantage. But for an SEO professional or for someone that wants a truly optimized page, page optimizer is a better choice. It's giving you schema. It's giving you the entities. It's giving you page structure, LSI, co-occurring keywords. It gives you an itemized to-do list. Not only that, it's telling me, hey, listen, your H1 needs to have this many variations. Not sure what a variation is? You have to have five of them. Here's the list. You pick out five. If you're in here, the LSI, hey, inside your title tag, you need to have one more. What's an LSI? Oh, oof, there it is. So it's the same. This is just a list of words. It doesn't tell you how many words and where. It tells you how many, but not where and which places are going to be the most potent for optimization scores. That's crucial here for optimization. How many keywords and where and where should I put them?
them. And then on top of that, there's other work that has to be done to optimize on page, like schema, your entity association. You have to do this anyway. So I want it all in one dashboard. Page Optimizer Pro is a better choice for me. For me, hands down, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. My name's Chris Palmer. If you have any future questions related to server or page optimizer and on page SEO tools at all, if you want me to look at something, please ask in the section below. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you in the next on page SEO, Surfer versus Page Optimizer Pro video. Have a wonderful day.